Morning, everybody. How are y'all doing today? I'm doing great, but I am currently addicted to Black Ops 6. It is very, very good. And the reason I haven't posted recently, by recently, I mean in like the last five days, is not because I didn't have time or anything. I've actually just been addicted, but I'm putting aside my addiction for a couple hours to get this video out today. Because as, well, I'm assuming you all know by now, Spider-Man 2 was confirmed to be coming to PC last week. Sony dropped their trailer on the PlayStation YouTube channel. And as expected, some people people are upset about it. And by some people, of course, I mean the PlayStation fanboys. Now, I don't think I should have to clarify this, but based on comments I've seen on my previous videos, I do have to clarify this. I am not talking about the majority of the PlayStation player base. I am talking about a small subsect of people who get in their feelings when other people get to play a game they enjoy on a different platform. So if you're just a normal PlayStation gamer and you don't have a problem with this whatsoever, I am not talking about you. Instead, today we're talking about JTech TV because as expected he is not happy about this. Despite his claim that he doesn't have any feelings about this, oh we knew this was gonna happen, which is true, he still got quite upset on stream about it. And so we're gonna take a look at his mini meltdown that he had. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into this. This is the one, and we're gonna start. So I don't really have any feelings about this. This was something that we all knew was going to happen anyway. Um, it's just something that Sony's going to do. I don't like it. I don't agree with it. I don't think they should continue to do it. But they're not going to listen to us. They're going to listen to the hopes that they make a ton of money on PC. So you say you don't have any feelings about this and then five seconds later immediately say you don't like it and you don't agree with it. Disliking something sounds like a feeling to me, but who knows, maybe that's just how I feel about that. Boo, you stink! Huh? Uh, I'm sorry. And I love the astronomical levels of Kobe saying, oh, well, they're just hoping they're going to make a ton of money on PC. Uh, no, they are making a ton of money on PC. Not just as shown by 2022 when they made over $2 billion, but they are absolutely making way more than that this year. Now, how do I know this? Because Helldivers 2. Over 450,000 concurrent players when Sony's other first party games on PC only hit like, what, 70k, 80k? As well as the fact that, you know, we know this game has sold more on PC see that on PlayStation, and we know the game has sold over 12 million copies, meaning over 6 million of those copies were on PC. And even putting Helldivers 2 aside, Ghost of Tsushima cracked the highest concurrent player count for a single-player Sony first-party game on PC. I don't have the exact sales data, but that seems to suggest it sold a lot. And on top of that, just look at the history of PlayStation games on PC. Now, I can't show the leaked chart from the PlayStation leak several months ago, but if you recall, Horizon sold what, like 3 million? God of War? sold over a million. I think maybe even over two million. Spider-Man sold over a million in a couple months. Sony doesn't have to hope to make money on PC. As long as they put out the games people want on PC, they'll make money. And they'll make a hell of a lot more if they go day and date as shown with Helldivers. They're gambling. And you know how there's either a family member or a friend with you at the gambling table? Or have you seen this on movies or TV shows and they're telling that person to stop? And uh, the person goes deeper and deeper. And then they put different things up for collateral. Um, you know, the PlayStation gamers like myself are, are, are that person right next to Sony telling them, hey, Sony, maybe you should stop. That is hilarious that this dude thinks he's Sony's friend. That, wow. Well, now that I think about it, is it more hilarious or sad? You know what? I've come to the conclusion it's more sad. This dude unironically thinks he's Sony's friend, and he's giving them friendly advice and trying to save them by saying, hey, stop putting games on PC. Dude, without PC, Helldivers 2 would not be half as successful as it currently is. The thing is, his comparison here is so dumb, not just because he thinks he's Sony's friend, but also because he's acting like Sony is losing money every time they put a game on PC. And the sad part is, he unironically believes this. Like, he truly does believe this. He is this ignorant to the truth that Sony is making a ton of money off of PC. He truly believes, despite all the evidence to the contrary, that they are losing money and that they're just hoping every single time they put out a game that they're gonna make money. When that could not be further from the truth. It's funny because, I guess spoiler alert, later in this clip, Jay tells people to wake up. Jay, you yourself need to wake up to the fact that Sony is making money on PC and they're going to continue to make money on PC, regardless of how much you don't like them putting games on PC. 
going all in on PC. I mean, first they put PC games on, uh, PlayStation games on PC. They had so many different developers doing ports. Then they got the bright idea to buy a studio that will only do the ports. And even though not all of them do the ports, or sorry, not, uh, Nixus doesn't do all the PC ports, but they're doing a lot more of them now. The Nixus PC ports are making less money than the older ports when the idea of PlayStation games going to PC was a very fresh new thing. Now, Jay, I would love to hear your source for this information, that the Nixus ports are making less money than the older ports, because it is true that the older ports like Zero Dawn have sold more copies than the current ports. Again, Zero Dawn sold, what, like 3 million? God of War sold like 2 million, Spider-Man 1 million, definitely more than 1 million at this point. Ghost of Tsushima, definitely over 2 million. Again, if it cracked God of War's player count. So, yes, individually, the games haven't outsold sold Horizon, except for Helldivers, but that wasn't a Nixus port, so we're not going to talk about that one. But in total, all the Nixus ports have definitely made more money than Horizon on its own. And if Nixus was supposedly such a bad investment, then why are they still around making ports? It really makes you think, doesn't it? Well, what am I saying? Jay doesn't think. Now, it's been oversaturated in my personal opinion. Like I said, roughly 17 to 18 PlayStation first party IPs are currently on PC. They don't care. They can crack all these games, whether it's from another studio or from Nixus, in the blink of an eye, in, in, in just a single day, right? Or less than a day. They can crack the game, they can pirate the game. That same day that it launches, they can already have a pirated version on their PCs and playing it. Oh, come on, Jay. Give the people who cracked the game some credit. They cracked Forbidden West in 30 seconds. God, saying it was less than a day, it's just underselling it. But yes, you're right. People can absolutely crack the games very quickly and pirate them. Want to know what's funny about that, though? Most of the people who pirate games weren't going to buy the games in the first place. So it's not like Sony's losing money on a sale. It's not like, oh, they were going to buy the game, but then they saw the pirated version, so they didn't. No, they were never going to buy the game in the first place. So it's not a lost sale. And guess what? Most people People, despite the pirated versions being available, will still buy the game, myself included. Now, I don't own God of War Ragnarok yet. Could I pirate it? Absolutely. Am I going to? No, I'm gonna buy it whenever I feel like playing it. And plus, Sony is really not helping themselves out when it comes to PC sales, considering now their single-player games are launching with a PSN requirement, which not only is gonna turn a lot of people off, but also that blocks the sales of the games in, what, almost 180 countries? I mean, Gabe Newell himself said, piracy is a service problem. If people are pirating your game, then most likely it's a you problem, not a consumer problem. The point is, piracy is nowhere near as close of an issue for these publishers as Jay thinks it is. In his mind, 99% of people pirate games and the devs make almost no money. Do I even need to explain that that's wrong? I, I think I've said enough. They don't beat the games, they just want to mod it and play around with it. They don't care about the characters, they don't care about the story. Oh no, PC gamers don't care about the stories or the characters, they just want to play the game and have fun and install mods. I'll have FaZe Jeb ask this question for me as nicely as possible. Who gives a fuck? Why do you care so much? Who cares if people are playing the game and paying super close attention to the story, if they're getting super invested, or if they're just goofing around installing some mods, having a fun time with it? Who cares? It is a single player story driven game. Sony sure as hell doesn't care, they just care Care about getting the money off the sale. Once they do, why does it matter what people do with the games? You're acting like if somebody gets super invested in the characters and the story or something, Sony's just somehow gonna generate more money automatically. Like they get an extra dollar in their bank account per person who gets super invested in the story. No. Besides, we're talking about Spider-Man 2 here. That is not a story I want to get super invested in. No spoilers or anything, but... God, it's not very good. Whatever, Sony doesn't care about people getting invested in the story, they just want the money, so why should you care? Oh, that's right, because in your made-up fantasy, in your mind, they don't make any money. So Sony's not making any money on an initial sale of pirates, or anybody that cracks the game to present that to other pirates. They're not making money on any of the mods. You can't monetize mods on PC. Bethesda has tried that, they failed. So, Sony's not making money off the initial game sales, they're not making money off of the mods or any of the other types of content PC fans post about PlayStation games going to PC or on PC. 
So there's no more money coming to PlayStation for the benefit of the PlayStation console gamer from this push to push stuff on PC. My question here is why do you continue to do it? Because hear me out, you're stupid and dumb and wrong. Sure, they're not making money off of mods or any content that PC gamers post for other people to download. But guess what? Nobody's making money off of that. That's how mods work. They're made by the community for free for other people in the community. And then yet again, you're just completely in denial about how much money they're making off of initial game sales. Because guess what? Yes, piracy exists on PC. That does not mean everybody or even the majority of people pirate games. That just means the potential is there. This is like saying that because chat GPT exists, that automatically means every student is going to use it for their assignments. No, and I can confirm, I don't use it for mine. He's so genuinely confused as well. He's like, why are you still doing it? It's just not clicking in his brain that maybe he's wrong. And it's hilarious and painful to watch at the same time. And that the optimization is going to be much better um, on a PS5 Pro compared to a high power PC where your performance can go anywhere between dirt uh, and a broken PC port to really good. But again, you might need to invest another $3,000 in your PC for you not to be held back by any type of restrictions um, instead of, you know, you could pay $700. And that's what I believe he de decided to do. Okay, so you might be very confused, and I'm sorry, I jumped ahead a bit there, but it's a very long rant, I don't want to play the whole clip. The context for this clip is Jay was going into GameStop to pre-order a PS5 Pro, of course, and he allegedly met somebody who has a $2,000 PC, who was also pre-ordering a PS5 Pro because he didn't want to miss out on games day one on PS5, and he didn't want to wait for the PC ports. And then Jay was saying the other reason he was buying a PS5 Pro was the optimization, quote-unquote. Now, even if this story is true, which, call me crazy, but I have my doubts, this whole clip just shows how little Jay knows about PC gaming. $3,000 to not get bottlenecked? Are you kidding me? That is not even close to true. And plus, he says, oh, you can just pay $700 for a PS5 Pro, as if that thing isn't CPU bottlenecked. Like, what are you talking about? Every time these guys say, oh, you have to pay several thousand dollars to not get bottlenecked on PC, it makes me, like, my brain melts. They're just so wrong, but they're so confident. Also, Alan Wake 2 running at 800p 60fps? That doesn't sound, like, optimized to me, but what do I know? And on top of that, please don't forget that games will still be running at 30fps. The PS5 Pro is not going to magically make every 30fps game disappear. Uh, with that being said, you're right, though. Um, there's... There's not a fear of missing out effect anymore on PlayStation exclusive or FOMO. Because if you wait just a year, you will get the game on PC. There is not any real excitement going on when it comes to PlayStation exclusives. And, and it's getting to the point that this happens so much that your main line of consumers, the PlayStation gamer may not be so enthusiastic going forward of any new PlayStation exclusive announcement because we are going to have one year of doing fanboy shit, running around the internet and bragging about how good it looks on our platform, and then it goes to PC later. Oh no, people like JTech can't run around and brag about how great a game that is locked to their platform is. What a terrible, terrible thing. What are you talking about? I mean, I guess some points for self-awareness, but you're upset that you won't be able to fanboy over games because they go to PC day and date as well? I say this and I mean it 100% genuinely. Huh? Are you seriously complaining that FOMO is not going to be a major factor anymore? How backwards is your brain? I am legitimately convinced the back of his brain is at the front of his skull. His arguments are so anti-consumer, I have to believe he's getting paid by Sony at this point. Certainly would explain his dedication to them. And plus, to assume that most people are not going to be excited about PlayStation games anymore because they're gonna come to PC at some point, that is completely idiotic. Nobody is excited 
excited for upcoming PlayStation games right now, except for maybe Ghost of Yote, because there's barely anything coming up, and what is coming up for the most part is live service stuff that doesn't look very good. It has nothing to do with the fact that PC ports are more common and are happening sooner, because if that were true, why was Helldivers 2 so successful and so hyped up? That was one of the biggest games this year, and it launched day and date on PC. If anything, going day and date on PC helps with the excitement levels for PlayStation games. Oh my god, I gotta drink some water. I'm getting lightheaded. Jesus. Alright, so now we're actually gonna skip ahead several minutes, because the next several minutes of the stream is him showing the Until Dawn remake trailer and the Horizon Zero Dawn remastered trailer, and just kind of talking a little bit about how, oh, look, these are single-player games that are coming to PC day and date. And it just goes on for so long, so we're gonna skip ahead. Not only did they do two day and dates in the same fucking year on PC, they did two day and dates in the same fucking month. My question to everybody listening to the sound of my voice, when are you going to wake the fuck up? Is he trying his hardest to sound like one of those pastors in church? Because holy... Wake up, sheeple! Don't be pawns of the devil! Embrace your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ! Oh my god. But no, it was not two day and dates in a single year. It was actually three, because again, Helldivers. Actually, no, four, because Concord. Sorry, I already forgot about that game. God, dude, Jay telling other people to wake up is hilariously ironic. Brother, you need to wake up to the fact that Sony is making a ton of money on PC ports, and day and day it will only help them make more money. You need to get out of this state of denial you're in. It's really unhealthy. And even worse, it makes you look like an idiot. Because I know what you're thinking. Until Dawn is classified as a remake, and Horizon Zero Dawn is classified as a remaster. Then why didn't they go day and date with the Horizon games? Why didn't they go day and date with the, the Uncharted remasters? Because they know how the fuck we would feel, but... So many of you guys are so just comfortable with this shit. They trying. They're testing you. And you're failing the test. I know you heard me say that shit before. You guys are failing the test. Yeah, and guess what? People are comfortable with it because most people aren't fanboys like you. They don't care. I asked my roommate on stream. He doesn't care that PlayStation games go to PC. In fact, he prefers it. Because guess what? It allowed us to play Helldivers together. We've racked up, what, over 50 hours playing together in the last few weeks? It's been awesome. Day and date is a great thing, especially for multiplayer games. And I cannot wait for it to happen with single player as well. I mean, again, it already has, but you know what I mean. With new single single player releases. And what does he mean by you're failing the test? He said they tested you and you're failing the test. What what test? Whether or not you're okay with games being day and day on PC and how come being okay with that means you failed the test? I am so unbelievably confused, but thankfully we finally reached the end. I'm tired, I'm hungry, and I feel my brain rotting away. So I'm gonna go get the new armor set in Helldivers and then eat my feelings. So yeah, anyway, with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't like it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will catch you all next time.